Hey, Internet. Okay, so this is the mic situation right now. We're going to talk about ADHD. This is Ginny Mai, and she she's a TV personality, and she just made this video. She published this video recently talking about how she has ADHD. I wanted to react to it as somebody who has ADHD, and I just feel like it's not talked about enough, like in, in for real, like just for realsies. You get what I'm saying? It's not, no, there are ADHD books, there's ADHD YouTube channels, but like, can we just like girl talk for realsies? That's what I'm saying. And I want to react to this and see how do we relate? Keep in mind, Jeannie Mai, she's a rich woman. She works in Hollywood. She's friends with, she, I'm sure she has celebrity friends. She has a different lifestyle than me. I consider myself more like the average person who has ADHD. And um, let's just see what's the difference and do we still relate? My philosophy is when you have ADHD, the best thing that you can do for yourself, the number one, the closest thing to a cure is to make a lot of money. Did, did you think I was going to say meditate, gaze into the glow of a candle, meditate on a daily basis and eat your vitamin D? No. The best thing you can do if you have ADHD, even when you're medicated, I took my medicine today. Make money. <laughs> okay. So this is a woman who has the money. Let's see if her life is any different. By the way, if you're new to my channel, subscribe if you vibe. This channel is solely based on vibes. I do not like, I wish one day, one day we can say, I post new video every Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell one day, not today. Okay. We vibe in here. So if you vibe, subscribe, and if you want to help your girl out, hit the like button because I'm definitely going to forget to remind you. Okay, let's start. Does anybody know the Asian guy on Glee? What's his name? Harry. Harry Shum. I want you to know I just went into the kitchen and put tons of olive oil on my leg and doesn't it look... So by the way, I put this on 1.25 speed. Oh, let me put, let me put subtitles in case, just in case. Mashing. Wait, I want those notes with me. Okay, Papa Mai. Oh. All right, let's talk about your ADHD. So I think what she's trying to show is how like, how her mind can just go from one thing to a completely different thing and just zap all over the place when they're supposed to be talking about ADHD. Um, you know, I don't know if that's actually an ADHD thing. I don't know. I mean, I, I know our brains, we do get easily distracted. So it's very easy to, for our brain to go from here to here. It's very easy, but I feel like a lot of people do that when they're comfortable and they're having fun or just being themselves. I feel like even some neurotypical people do that too. So, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I don't know. Okay, she just wants to be cute. Let's go. Um, let's just... Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Yeah. Thank you so much, Listerine and Neutrogena, for sponsoring this episode. Hello, Hannah. I'm talking about something that I've never really discussed before. I don't like owning that I have ADHD as much yet. I'm getting used to it. I feel like when I say that I have ADHD, I'm apologizing and excusing, but I know I'm greater than letting that consume me. So I'm in that process. So I'm- It is difficult when you're first diagnosed. You kind of don't want to believe. Well, okay. Some people don't want to believe their diagnosis at first. That's very normal. For me, when I was diagnosed, I immediately embraced it because it explains everything in my life. It explained it. It just explained everything. And over the years, as you learn more about your ADHD and ADHD symptoms, more and more things of your past, you start to understand it. And so, I mean, but also it's hard because you kind of don't want to take medication. You don't want to feel like you have to depend on something to function. So I get that. I get not wanting to embrace it in that way. What I do find interesting is she believes saying you have ADHD is like an excuse. Down here in Texas, we don't 
some people do, but we don't really see that. Like when somebody says they have ADHD, they're not saying it as an excuse. They're saying that they have this diagnosis, but she must be in a circle where people say, oh, I'm so ADD. She must live somewhere where that's normal for her to feel that kind of guilt about saying that she's not has excusing a myself when I say it. I'm just telling you, I was told I have it. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. Before we get into all of it, okay, so you're gonna bring the whole family over? Awesome. All right, I'll see you soon, babe. It's happening. Out with the pumpkins, in with the holidays, cocktail parties, dressing up, getting glam, conversations, relatives before they come. So I know this is an ad read, but I did want to talk about like this holiday season. Um, it used to depress the hell out of me holiday season. And it's not just seasonal depression. I, um, you know, growing up, I really did not like spending time at home. I really, really, really hated it. I would always try to find some excuse. Like I'm working, I'm volunteering. I have winter classes. I would always try to find some excuse to not spend time at home. The holiday season gave me so much anxiety. I had to be around certain people that that I didn't like. Um, I had to be around people that I I like and people who are my family, but I just didn't know what to say. I just felt awkward. Like there's just so there were so many negative, painful feelings about this season. Now I'm in a new phase of life. Um those painful feelings are no longer relevant and I'm it's I literally I feel like a baby I feel like I'm a new baby experiencing the holidays for the first time so speaking of first times my partner wants to host Christmas at our house at our brand new home that's not decorated or anything and that gave me so much anxiety like I have never hosted before. I don't know what we're doing. Why would you volunteer us for that? But also it's fun. Like it, I'm very nervous, but also coming up with like, what am I going to do? How am I going to plan this? It's like fun. It feels like a roller coaster. You know, that adrenaline when you're up really high, you're really scared, but also it's kind of exciting. That's how I feel right now. Mama needs a moment for some self-care <sighs> with my favorite duo. Not now, Paul. Okay. So this is the Neutrogena Silver Lion Retinol Cream. Retinol is a... So she's doing an advertisement for Neutrogena and Listerine. I just find it kind of funny because this video is about having ADHD, yeah? We struggle with regularly using products such as Neutrogena and Listerine. How, doing your skincare routine on a regular basis, taking care of your teeth on a regular consistent basis is very difficult for us. And, you know, we're going to skip this ad read. I just find it interesting that she doesn't address that. Um, look, I'm not being nitpicky. I'm not saying cancel her. She's problematic because like, that's not what I'm saying at all. I just think it's kind of funny. Um, that's how you know she's still new to her diagnosis because, look, I, I don't get brand deals. But if I were blessed enough to get sponsored and I'm making a video about ADHD, I'm definitely touching on the fact that girls, baby, this Neutrogena cream, I know you're not going to use this every day. I, like, let's be for real. We have ADHD, honey. We're not, we're not using it every day, but you know, it still works when you do it every three days. I don't know. I definitely would have tied that in because that's very much a part of having ADHD. Also, I don't believe you use this every day. I don't know. Neutrogena is pretty good. Neutrogena does now have some pretty good products. Maybe she does, but I just know. I don't have as much money as she does and I don't use Neutrogena. Like, I, I don't know. I do have a Neutrogena product. Let me, let me not say, who knows? Who knows? But definitely, it's just kind of funny that um, she didn't consider her ADHD in this ad read. Well, let's skip it. 
we're gonna skip okay we definitely are not using the screen also i know adhd is not autism but it does have some relation the feeling of listerine in your mouth is so it's so um what's the word like we are so adverse to it like we don't we don't like it we want to stay away from it that feeling i just think like who knows maybe she can maybe she can do it but um mentioning things like that like, okay, how do you actually use the serene? Because that feeling in your mouth is so un, 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 what's the word? Not unattractive. It's so unnerving. Like, what do you do? Do you mix it with water? Like, what do you do? Because that feeling, like, because of that feeling, it will make you not want to use the serene on a regular basis. Anyway. Links below this, this holiday season continue. and for sponsors. I did go get checked because my mind was all over the place and I uh, I got diagnosed with ADHD. Very common, learning how to work with it. From that episode, there were so many comments from a lot of you expressing that you guys have it as well. You guys know me by now, I'm not saying this to be shady, but the other reason why I don't bring up that I have ADHD is because I feel like everybody I know either says they have it or claims they have it. See, I'm connecting the dots now. That's what makes me feel like I'm using it as an excuse to just say I have it when I actually have been diagnosed with what I love about every single one of you. That is so annoying. I, that's very annoying. And, um, I'm glad I don't have to hear that all the time. Or maybe I'm spending time with people who are a little bit more like woke, I guess is what we call it. People are a little bit more aware. I hate that this like woke is like considered a negative thing now because it really comes from like, the African-American community being aware of the system in place that they don't benefit from. Do you get what I'm saying? Like this woke was supposed to mean something good. It's supposed to mean you are aware of the reality that you live in and you move accordingly. But now it's kind of been bastardized, but low key, before the right wing um, encountered wokeness, it was starting to be too, uh, like too connected to the hoteps, who we do make fun of on a regular basis. Okay, we do we do not like the hoteps, but watch some, but watch one of my followers be a hotep <laughs> and start leaving paragraph comments. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, that's unfortunate. And I think that's why people don't like when others say I'm so ADD, I'm so ADHD. It trivializes something that's actually a condition that needs treatment. Like it's actually serious. Like when you have ADHD, you, your likelihood to pass away at a young age skyrockets to the roof when you have ADHD. That's how serious it is. Um, so that's unfortunate that, you know, it's the norm where she lives to kind of trivialize it. And now she feels guilty for even discussing it. ADHD is not an excuse. It's a real thing you need to get treatment for. And knowing that certain behaviors that you have or certain mistakes that you make is because you have ADHD is very powerful, necessary. It's not an excuse. And if you're having to deal with somebody who is trying to gaslight you, telling you that it is an excuse, they do know better. They know better and they just wanna make you feel bad. And don't let anybody do that to you. You guys, is you're so detailed and thorough with your comments that I really got into this. Racha Minkara, I love you. You said, please do tell us about your ADHD and how you found out because I would love to hear your story since my sister has it. Emma B. So when you have a loved one with ADHD, definitely ask all the questions. Talk to other people with ADHD. Google, uh, watch YouTube videos because it will help you understand. There's a lot of things that we do when we have ADHD that we don't realize is hurting other people. We don't realize that something that we did that we just, we cannot help but do it. We don't realize that somebody might feel like that means we don't care about them. 
or that we're lying or that we're stupid or like we don't realize what these things mean to others. And if it's somebody that you love and you care about and you want to have a healthy relationship with them, learn about ADHD. That way certain things don't no longer annoy you or you can better plan for it or you like you can know that they meant well in their heart that like they weren't they're not doing a certain thing to hurt you and it takes everything they have to to make sure that they're treating you the way that you want to be treated but when you know when you have it's kind of like if somebody's in a wheelchair and you want them to go to like dance with you and you feel hurt that they won't dance with you, but you understand, well, they're in a wheelchair. They can't stand up. I'm going to let, I want to dance with them. Let's accommodate. I'll dance with them in their wheelchair. And the same kind of thing with ADHD. Um, okay. Who you're a member. Thank you so much for being a member of my fam. I love you. Love, love, love VI people. You said, oh, I can relate so much. I wasn't very good at school either. It's not that I wasn't smart. It's just that I couldn't focus due to undiagnosed ADHD. I find you so inspiring that you've come this far by using your own skill, passion, and drive to pursue your dreams without being top student. It really shows you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Adrian. So that was definitely me at a certain point. I thought that I needed to be a top student to have my dreams come true. And like when I look back on it, I still believe that. I still believe my dreams would have come true sooner, faster, had I been the top student. But not for nothing, I was an above average student. And it did lend amazing opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to have otherwise. Um, but there was just this part of me that was so upset with myself because I knew I could have done more. I knew I had it in me. I had the drive. I had the passion. But this ADHD was just in my way. And it did make me feel like not just, oh, well, if you're not a top student, you can't do anything. But beyond student life, I felt like I have the drive and the passion for literally whatever I have my mind on. But ADHD gets in the way. ADHD will make me miss the audition. ADHD makes me socially awkward so people don't like me. So this is another aspect. I don't know if Jeannie Mai deals with this. I don't think she does. She's a TV personality. In order to be a TV personality, you people have to like you. You have to have a personality that people like. Um, you have to be good at making friends. I don't have that. So I have ADHD, depression, and socially awkward it just felt like there's no way I can win in life. <laughs> I don't know if Jeannie has depression. I don't think she does. I know she's she has talked about depressed moments, but I don't think she's been diagnosed with the sadness. And she does have a... Well, I mean, I don't know her in real life, but she does seem to have a lot of friends. She does. Um, so I don't think she struggles with some of those things. So that helped lend her. Um, some help in her career. And the point I'm trying to make is I used to like be very hopeful, just like, you know, look at all these other successful people with ADHD. Maybe I can make it. And then like, as I struggled and got tired, I just started to realize there's other things that I'm not considering. There's other nuances that I'm not considering. I'm not considering that that person is rich. I'm not considering that that person has family ties in the industry. I'm not considering that that person is very gregarious. You know what I mean? Have you ever met somebody who's like a Kiki Palmer? Do you know what I mean? Kiki Palmer, like she's the kind of person, instant friends. Like she meets you for, give her literally five seconds of FaceTime Instantly, you feel like your best friends. That's what I mean by gregarious. I have a friend who's like that. Blows my mind. Like, I'm just like, wow. That's a gift from God. It truly is. Truly, it's a gift from God. But anyway. I used to feel so blue about that. I used to feel like, no, you can't put your, you can't achieve anything. You can't. You can't. And, uh, um, doesn't help that 
you know, it was reinforced at home that I'm a black woman immigrant. I used to have an accent. I, I used to like, I don't know. I used to talk like this. I don't know. I used to talk like this, like all the time. I don't know. Um, and it used to, I used to talk like this, especially when I was drunk. I would get drunk. I start talking like this. It was a lot of fun because we go to the club and like guys would think I'm from like a different country. It makes me so exotic. Oh, so like no, that was fun times. Anyway, or sometimes I would speak like this and I don't know. I just had a couple of different accents, right? And, um, yeah, I mean, even today, even when I speak like this, it's coming out a little bit, even when I just speak like this, like how I've been speaking this whole video, people will be like, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> I remember one time I had a patient, I didn't know where it was going because they were like, you're not from Texas. I was like, um, I am. They'd be like, no, you are not from around here. Where are you from? It literally felt like a movie. You know, those movies where like there's some big guy and he's like, you're not from around here. It's all intimidating and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Uh, from a couple of different places like I don't know you don't want to tell somebody your whole life story especially when you don't know if they're like what are you trying to be are you trying to like tell me to get the heck out of here Yankee or what anyway um yeah at home I was raised to they really wanted me to believe and no I cannot just be anything I want to be um and then I would try to get inspiration from people like Jenny Mai and then the reality sets in of, no, they have a couple of things that I don't have. So the missing piece for me as a young Udo was that I also have traits that are to my advantage. I just didn't know which of my traits was seen as valuable in the marketplace. I just didn't know and I didn't have the luxury or time to explore it. I was trying to friggin' just survive. And when you have ADHD and you're in survival mode, it really, it sucks really bad. I, I, I literally contemplated just completely giving up and just becoming homeless. Like literally just buy a car and just live in my car and just, just live that way and just give up because it was so, it was so hard. It was so hard. It was so hard. And it was hard because I have ADHD. That's one of the reasons why I made this channel. I always felt like I'm destined to do something great. I'm destined to do something that I didn't believe I could do. Let me make this channel because people like Jeannie Mai never shared a secret. You see how she just move on to the next question? She, she, people, I just noticed that very successful people, they don't actually share their full story. How did they do it? How did they cope? Like what kind of insight, like, when I say insight, I mean, that's your story. What can I glean from your story that's real, that can work for others? You know what I mean? Because a lot of times they'll tell their story and they'll be like, you, you can do anything you put your mind to. No, can we be for real though? Can we be for, what is the for real insight? Not the Saturday morning school special, whatever. So um, anyway. Liano Rizzi said, Jeannie, I've also been dealing with ADHD and now and I feel like I can relate to you on such a deeper level. I've started college and it all can be really hard for me, so I find it very encouraging to see someone thriving and being organized like you, despite also dealing with the whirlwind of emotions, distracting thoughts and confusion swirling about it in our ADHD brains. Adriano, you hit me really hard right there that you think I'm thriving. In my mind, think I'm barely getting by and that I'm a hot, fuzzy mess. 
So when you have ADHD, that is your default. That feeling of you're barely getting by, you're a hot, fuzzy mess. Your brain feels. She, it's not just that she feels she's a hot, fuzzy mess. Her literal brain, like when she's just existing, looking around, it feels like a hot, fuzzy mess of a perception. You're, you just have mind fog 24 seven confusion. Um, like literally you have to write everything down because you just, you just cannot trust that you, your brain is getting it. So I understand what she's saying, but remember I said the best thing to a cure for ADHD is to have money. So let's see what she's talking about when she says she just feels like she's just getting by. Notice the things that she mentions here. In all places, my marriage, being a mom, being a sister, being a good friend, especially when my friends need me, I feel like I'm all over the place. So notice how she's talking about relationships. She didn't say money, health, health insurance. Um, she didn't mention those things. I'm telling you, like, when you have ADHD, make some money because that eliminates 90% of your problems, having money. You struggle with eating on a regular basis, you can hire a chef. You struggle with, um, you know, getting your medicines, you can hire the provider. You can hire a provider that mails you your medicines every 30 days like this. Your home is a mess. You can hire a maid. The maid can come every single day. Do you get what I'm saying? There's so many aspects of life. She said, oh, I'm struggling in every area. And she doesn't mention, she, the only areas that she mentioned is like her relationships and motherhood. Do you get what I'm saying? I can't imagine being a mom with ADHD and no money. Like, she's not struggling the same way most people with ADHD are struggling. Let's just say that. I'm finding a similar thing. I'm not rich. I'm nowhere close to as rich as Jeannie Mai. I'm not, I'm not even at six figures. I'm very blessed to have a partner who contributes. And I am able to afford some help, some help. We moved, I hired somebody to help unpack all this stuff and I'm hiring somebody to help organize. Mind you, it's not the best. Like this organizer, I, I kind of don't like her, but it's like something is better than nothing and I can afford it. There was a time that I could not even afford this, like this, this organizer that I'm not even happy with to give me something that's better than nothing. There was a time very recently I couldn't even afford that. And it has helped tremendously. It has lifted weights off my shoulders and I'm able to think more about relationships. So the point I'm trying to make is there is a gap. Her Jeannie Mai struggling with ADHD is very different than everyone else down here who's struggling with ADHD. And I say down here, I simply mean like find that worth and it will be good for her to appreciate that gap. Even me, I appreciate the gap every day because I used to be down here and now I'm here and that gap, I appreciate that gap every day. When you appreciate that gap, it makes you so thankful. It, it removes a lot of the, it removes the, the stigma you might feel, the guilt you may feel, the inadequacy. It removes a lot of the negative feelings you might have about your diagnosis. When you understand that where you are, 
even with your ADHD, is leaps and bounds beyond what maybe the average person or below average person, even the below average person. And again, I'm talking about, I'm talking about net worth. I'm talking about your socioeconomic economic status. Your leaps and bounds above that and you're able to take care of yourself, which is the most important thing, being able to take care of yourself. That, when you have ADHD, it's an accomplishment. So that's a huge compliment and a reminder that I'm doing okay. You're now doing, that I know what ADHD You're doing more than okay. And the other thing is, it's very easy to, you, you might feel like you're doing worse than your near typical counterparts. Like, you know, let's say she's concerned about her relationships. It's easy to forget that there are some things that just universally are difficult. Like being a mother is difficult universally. Like there is no running away from that or fixing that. You know what I mean? Maintaining your marriage when you have the baby, that's hard. Not just for you, mama, but for your husband as well. He is probably, he is struggling. Even though as a woman, you're taking on most of the responsibility. Usually when it comes to the home, the woman is in charge, right? Decorating, keeping it clean. Yes, I'm sure she can hire people to take care of it, but it's still her who's thinking of it, most likely. No, actually we know because she talks about this, right? Um, taking care of the baby. Daddy can help. He can say he helps up and down. It's not the same as you're the mother. Um, maintaining relationships in the family, making sure like family events is going according to plan. Like you burden a lot. You take on a lot of the burden. And with you having most of the burden, understanding that like, even your husband feels overwhelmed <laughs> and he's not even dealing with all the stuff that you're dealing with. That perspective also helps because it also reminds you that you have ADHD. You're still a human being. You're like, you're still a normal human being. ADHD is, I go back to the parts of my childhood where I felt so ashamed about things and I'm like, oh, I'm okay, like, I, I, this is what I had. I just didn't know it yet. When I go back in those diaries that I shared with you in that episode, I can see where my mind is all over the place. It's so hard for me to think now. I even forgot what I came here to write about. Yo, so she says she go, thinks back, like, moments of her past and, re and realizes, oh, I had ADHD, that's why. That's so helpful. Um, growing up, my mom was very mean to me. She was very, very mean. To this day, like the older I get, the more I'm like, I don't understand how you could have it in your heart to behave this way to your child. But there are a lot of things that she felt like I was doing intentionally and she would never believe me. And when I would say, I actually am doing the best I could I actually thought that I did really good. It actually just makes me really sad to think like, oh, I had ADHD. So I literally did really, really well. And it's just really sad that, you know, she in, thought that it was, I was trying to do something bad intentionally when actually that was me exceeding expectations with ADHD. Um, it hurts. Like, it hurt. Like, I can't, like, I don't know what, oh, Jeannie Mai is an Asian woman. I have to, um, I believe, and just based on the little things I know about her, she has to have some of that shared experience of, you know, her relationship with her mother or maybe even both her parents and, seeing how certain things that happen 
It's literally because you have ADHD and nobody was giving you what you needed. Not even giving you what you needed. Nobody was giving you any grace or consideration. It's more than just, wow, my mind was all over the place. It's, it's more than just my mind is all over the place. It's literally your habits, your, your ability to comprehend certain situations. You know, like where you put your focus, where you, how, how, like how you understand where to put your focus is literally everything. It's not just, oh, my diary's all over the place. Maybe she doesn't understand her ADHD that well yet to know that like it goes deeper than seeing your mind is scattered on paper, but it even tells you a lot about why you were raised the way you were raised and what that means. I said that in the journal. At that young age, I knew my train of thought was really difficult already. In elementary school, I got amazing grades. Middle school, I got okay grades. High school, it got really, really bad. In that time of my grades being like an actual indicator of my ability to perform and focus, things like missing out on my friend's dates, I would make the date to meet with my friends. There was this amazing skating rink called Cal Skate in Milpitas. And I would say, guys, everybody talk to your parents, figure it out, bring your skates, bring a friend, and we're all gonna be there on Saturday. Two o'clock, Saturday, at Cal Skate, guess who wasn't there? Cause she was at home eating a bowl of noodles. All my friends would be ringing up my landline, but my mom would be on the phone and it would be a busy tone cause if you know, you know, you didn't have access to people like you do now. And at school on Monday, they would act mean towards me. <laughs> oh, hi, you. And I'm like, what's going on? Why are you guys kind of weird? You stood us up and we had a good time without you anyway. I didn't know what day it was. So sometimes I would sleep and then I would just, like the night before, for some reason, as you're supposed to set your alarm, I wouldn't set my alarm because I thought tomorrow was Sunday. My mom would come in and be like, why are you still in bed? And I would be like, it's Sunday. No, it's Monday. And crazy, that happened today. I wanted to post something on Instagram, but I said, nope, tomorrow's hello, honey. Don't post anything, that's a clear day for that. So this morning, I start going through my feed at 10 a.m. and I'm like, Paul, does anybody know if Hello Honey posted yet? And he's like, it's Wednesday, we post tomorrow. The things that happened back then still happen to me today. Yeah, it's true. Um, that's, that's definitely an ADHD moment, ADHD thing. Um, it's so annoying. <laughs> it's really so annoying and those moments are so disappointing and it still happens, it still happens. Um, and it's like, as you get older, you just try to figure out coping mechanisms to make it happen less or make it like, make it less of a big deal when it does happen. Like, you know, like the one she explained, like, oh, I thought it was tomorrow and I don't see my Instagram post. It's not a big deal that she forgot because she probably has a team who, whose job it is to be organized and posted on a, on the, the day. So that's something, this is what I'm talking about, that you just need to have money. She ha she's able to hire a team that it's their job to take care of that. Whereas if you are somebody with ADHD and you're trying to be a social media influencer and you don't have enough money for a team, it's just you, that mistake would throw you off because it's just you. You are responsible for all the things, but she has money. She hires a team. They're responsible. So the only, the, the, the only consequence is just like, oopsie, embarrassing moment. Whereas for people like probably you and me, it actually could be like a really bad or, Let's say she was the social media manager. It was her job. And she posts on the wrong day. That could cost you your job. You get what I'm saying? So the things still happen, but when you have money, it doesn't matter that it happened. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, if, you can, or if you're able to hire a maid every day, it doesn't matter that you spilled the milk and... You cleaned it up, but the ground is still kind of sticky because 
in two hours the meat is coming to mop the floor. Doesn't matter. I was at one point a Gates student, which is gifted and talented education. But by the time high school came, guys, I would be looking at chemistry books. I would be looking at the periodic table and I would get frustrated. I could not understand the problems that I was supposed to use the periodic table to answer and it didn't connect. I one time looked at my GPA. I didn't even know it could go this low. It was like a 1.87. I remember because 187 is a very no number. Wow, I've only heard 187 in Snoop Dogg's raps and on my GPA report card. <laughs> While I'm telling you guys my story, first off, this message comes as a huge, big, fatty hug to everybody out there who either has been diagnosed with ADHD or... I don't know what I would have done if my GPA ever felt that, fell that low. I had ADHD, but I... Um... I had my parents started making... By the time I was in high school, my parents were able to afford me tutors. And I also was just very passionate about school because I literally felt like that was my only gateway out of like my very dissatisfactory existence. Um, like I really, really wanted to just live my own life. I really wanted to live my own life because I was so tired of being treated like, like I'm a, a piece of crap at home. So I felt like that was my only way because working was very difficult for me, like going to work on time and doing all the things you're supposed to do and then being able to come home and study like, and then I, my brain was so full of different passion ideas and it was just very difficult for me, so I thought, okay, if I can just be literally the best student, I can get money, scholarships, and all this stuff, and I'll be free. And then it didn't happen for me. My GPA was never that low. My GPA was still, I think it was like a 4.1 or 4.2, but the top students had, no, 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 no. I was so upset because... Ugh, I filled a class and it dropped my GPA to like 3.8 or something. The top students had a GPA of like 4.6. And if you're not American, yes, the highest the GPA goes is 4.0. So yeah, for having something higher than 4.0 means like you're like really smart. I think you may have it. I'm going to walk you through what I've learned. I'm still in the process of learning. Check with your doctor for everything. I don't know all the answers, but in conversations with other friends that I know that have ADHD or reading books, this is what I've compiled to tell you my story and to hopefully help you with yours. The list I'm gonna go through are some of the things you might identify with if you have ADHD. And a lot of them come from this book, Your Brain's Not Broken. Not only is it filled with examples of why your brain behaves the way it does, but also there's strategies on how to navigate with now knowing how your brain is different. The first trait that people with ADHD might have is something called hyperfocusing, the ability to hyperfocus, this intense focus that is very different from other people, neurotypicals, okay, the typicals out there. The typicals can sit for hours and they can read and they can let time fly and they're not bothered. For me, if I sit for hours, I need to be focused on something that I'm actually into. Otherwise, sitting for hours is virtually impossible. I will physically get antsy and I'll like- It feels like torture. Like boredom feels like a physical feeling it feels like something itches really bad and you can't scratch it it it's so it is so unpleasant and i've asked some neurotypical people how does boredom feel for you and they don't describe it that way like they don't describe it as physical, almost physical torture. It feels it all like it feels physical many times. Either scratch or my mind will say, text your friend, text your friend, text your friend. And while you're talking or while I'm supposed to be focusing, I'm on text your friend. I'm just gonna get my phone really quick. And it's that all day. The thing that helped me when I figured out where my career had to go, I picked a job where a big clump of those traits could be together. Being a makeup artist and a stylist was helping women, making them feel good, celebrating a wedding, a birthday, a bar mitzvah, whatever it may be, doing what I love to do. Oh, that's fantastic. That's something I wanted to do. I wanted a job where the things about my ADHD is an asset. So definitely makeup artist and being a stylist, that's great. Okay. 
So, um, I can see how someone like Jenny Mae parlays that into being a TV personality, right? Makeup and stylist for uh, people in Hollywood. You have a great personality. People might be drawn to you. And you can parlay that into a bigger career. I didn't have that. I don't have personality like that. I don't. I don't. I really don't. And I have some social anxiety. Some. Some social anxiety. Um, like, I definitely am not confident enough around people to do what she did. So the career I was thinking about was being an EMT or being a firefighter. I was thinking about that. Um, never happened. But I was seriously considering it. Doing it well, and I excelled. Art is a really good way to focus on something. Makeup is art. Styling someone is art. The second trait that somebody with ADHD may have is restlessness. And that means trouble with sitting still. Jeezy can sit in a movie theater or on the couch, or even when we're falling asleep, dead still like a rock. I am scratching 20 different places on my body. I'll be thinking a million things. It takes me a white noise machine, a dark, dark room, piece of fabric or um, cloth over my eye, warm sheets, I'll feel like my toes cold. It takes me about an hour and a half to fall asleep. Same. Now, something that's interesting, that fidgety that she has, she fidgets all the time, that actually keeps you thin. Did you, like, that actually keeps you thin. Those little movements, when I say thin, what I mean is, it helps prevent your body from storing excess body fat. Those little movements, like, I don't know, it, it burns extra calories. It burns like it, you would, you would never think you were like really bouncing. My knee is burning cow. It does like long-term. And this is something that you do unconsciously. It just happens. And even little things like it, like, like if, like if you're the kind of person, like if you're the kind of person that you move very intentionally like this, mm -mm. if you like kind of move like sporadically like that, if that's how you move, do you know what I'm saying? Like you raising your hand, you don't raise your hand like this. Pick me teacher, you raise your hand like this. Oh, me. Like over time, those things burn fat and keep you thin. So if you've ever wondered you like, you have a friend that like, she seems to eat like everything and she doesn't seem to gain a lot of weight. Notice if she's a fidgety type, she probably is a fidgety type. Um, I don't think I'm fidgety. I mean, no, I am. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm above average, but I don't, I'm not like. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I, I've, I don't know if I trained myself to calm down or it just happened over time, but in order to fall asleep, I do. I have, okay, this is what I have. It's called two point. It is blindfolds. They're really soft and they have, you can't see it, but they have headphones in them. So I'm able to listen, girl, I need white noise and the podcast playing and my eyes closed. It can't just be a fabric over my eye. It needs to have some weight to it. It can't just be like a tissue over my eye. It has to conform to my eye, have some weight to it, cannot be warm. It has to be, the room has to be cool and I'm wrapped in a good comforter. Otherwise I don't sleep. I don't sleep. I get up, I adjust the temperature, girl. Sleep is a whole ordeal. I don't like going to sleep because it's an ordeal. Ugh, I so relate to that every night. The only advice I have for you is just to make yourself comfortable. I won't be so close to my husband so I can be a little bit in my own space. So if I scratch and wiggle until I fall asleep, I'm not bothering him. The white noise helps me immensely. There's also another thing called gray noise. Whatever tone it is, something that just gets your brain to just like meditate 
and, and start to relax. I'm huge on meditation and breathing exercises. There are so many videos on YouTube that help you with breathing exercises. Grab a sound bowl, join them, dude. Impulsivity is another trait that people with ADHD have. Impulsivity is when hyperactivity and restlessness meet. Have you ever had a friend that instead of just hanging out at the bar with you, will go work the entire room? Know everybody, meet somebody, talk to somebody. Girl, that's you. That's not me. I can't work the entire, I wish, I so wish I was that type of person who just can talk to anybody and everyone. Go to the rooftop, check out everything. So in the- But I am that person, I need to check out everything. I need to see everything. Like, I cannot just sit, no, for real. Like, okay, so I have these girlfriends. I will never go to the club with them ever again. I won't, I will not do it. If I do, if I do do it, I need to have taken something. Kava root, um, some, Sai Sibling, oh, I forgot what it's called, the Magic Mushroom. I need to have taken something that will make me more gregarious. Alcohol's not good enough, no. Uh, because they don't want to do anything. Like, they literally just want to pick a spot and sit there. Literally, for hours. They were like, to the music. Oh, look at that, huh? I was clawing my eyes out in my brain. I'm like, the only reason we moved was because, you know, I'll be like, let's check out that room over there. After 20 minutes, hey, what's upstairs? After 20 minutes, what about over there? Okay. <laughs> And then we found like, so after we had seen like the whole place, they picked a spot to just sit and they kind of scroll, like scroll through their phone every now and then. I'm like, I can't, I'm never, I'm never going out with you. Or if I do go out with y'all again, we need to have somebody with a different dynamic or you need to give me the juice so I can bring a different dynamic because can't do that again. Then I go out with my with my friends who they're more like me. I don't know if they have ADHD. I don't know. They just like to get litty. That's what, what the hell I'm talking about. We will bust the wire open. Hey, hey, let's go up here. Let's go there. Let's go here. Let's dance here. Hey, let's dance on our way to the other room. I was full on like, boom, 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 hey. And everybody literally like the crowd parted like the Red Sea because we were boom, moving through, hey, uh, and every, and it just brought the energy to the room and it was so much fun. I was like, okay, I'm going out with y'all again. <laughs> but yes, I will never understand. I'm definitely not the friend. I, you cannot bring me nowhere and I just sit. No, that's not happening. I, I always forget that there are people like that's what they do. Like they, they just go somewhere and they just sit. I'm planning my wedding, right? And I want to have, I very much wanted to have a venue that I could have different, um, like different rooms or different areas for people to be in with a different vibe, right? I didn't just want one big hall. I wanted a big hall and then somewhere something that you can just have a different vibe so there's this one mansion oh it's so beautiful it's called violana oh my god i really i was really tempted to do it it's expensive it's expensive but i was like i could do a thursday wedding didn't do it because i just felt like maximum it seats 250 max Honestly, I feel like comfortably 200 and I just felt like I want more people. Y'all remember, remember I'm an Igbo gal. I'm a Nija gal. Okay. So I have a lot of people for the wedding and I was like, that's not enough people. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't know who, who I'm going to pick. Who am I going to not invite? I don't know. So I didn't do it, but I really liked the Olana because there were different rooms. There was there was a room over here to chill. There's a room over here. There's a room over there. Anyway, I ended up doing um, this other venue. The hall was very big. Definitely will see, be able to see everybody that I want to invite. And there's a patio, like a secluded patio. 
I've seen other venues that would have patios, but the patio is like, it's like kind of like, it's hard to get to. This place is perfect. The patio is right there. It's perfect. It's like, okay, great. It's another vibe. Like you can sit, you can relax, kind of get away from the loud music, relax, take pictures, you know, hang out. And then there's like, there's even more outdoor space. So it's very easy to get to. So it's like, okay. And then here's another area where, you know, maybe you just really want to be alone. Like you just really need a breather away from everyone. You know, there's a babbling brook you can look at, take some deep breaths outside. I'm like, this is literally perfect. This is perfect. Perfect. So I'm the kind of person, if I was invited to my wedding, I will be all over that. How I would make a 360 walk around. <laughs> and there are people who they probably would never, they would have no idea that there's a babbling brook because they would never leave their seat. They would have no idea that there's a babbling brook that you could take pictures in front of and be really cute. Anyway, so I'm babbling. Moment myself. and you're so excited that you speak without thinking. I always have described myself. Okay, I do that. Um, I do that and... Sometimes it gets me in trouble, sometimes not. Um, this one time it did get me in trouble because I was hanging out with this girl and I just asked her what was on my mind. And I thought we had a connection. So I thought like, let me just ask her. And come, come to find out she like, she really took offense to it. She was like, I don't know. Why did she ask me that question? Does she not like me? Why would she ask me that question? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I apologize to her. Like I found that it took a while for her to, you know, for me to even find out. I had no idea anything was wrong. I had no idea. And then like I finally found out and I apologized to her because I was like, I definitely did not want you to feel like that at all. Like I absolutely did not mean anything by that. I'm so sorry that I made you feel that way. I'm really sorry. I am so sorry. I'm going to like, you know, consider my words more, but, um, you know, and it wasn't, it's not like, it's not, a big, it's not a big deal at all. It's not a big deal, but I can see how, I could see how she might feel like, oh, this, did I do something wrong? I could see, I could see how she felt that way. But like once we got to an understanding, I was like, oh, wow, it's really not a big deal at all. But I still I apologize because I made you feel that way. And that was not my intention at all. So I'm, I apologize for that. But anyway, I was like, oh, my gosh, that 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 made me feel so. Um, it made me question myself. It did, because I do kind of just say something. But usually people like it. You Usually it makes people laugh. And what I've come to understand now is it's kind of like being a comedian. You know what I mean? Like you have to like really read the room. You have to be able to really know how you come off on other people and how do the other people feel about you? Like do they feel safe with you? It's not every comedian that can make like a certain type of taboo joke. There's taboo jokes that one person could say it and get canceled and another person could say it and get the biggest laugh ever. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of risky. But, um, and then there's sometimes that I just did not even realize that, <laughs> that I did not even realize that most people wouldn't have said what I said. And usually those are the ones where people laugh because I think sometimes something comes into my head that everyone is thinking. I'm just someone brave enough to say it. And so everybody likes it. But, um, but sometimes it get every now and then it gets me in trouble. As the person who thinks with their mouth, it just goes, <laughs> like it doesn't even like process when most people have a great filter and can like think about what they say. When you know this about yourself, put yourself in situations where people with impulsivity thrive. There is no accident why I became a talk show host. My very first job was criticizing people on how do I look. What I see is what you're gonna hear. That has put me in a career where I am hosting makeover shows. Yeah, I've always wished that I could be like a judge for American Idol or 
or I wish I could be a dance choreographer. My choreography sucks. Uh, there's no way I could be a dance choreographer, but um, I wish I could because I would be good at it. That person now, like that, a job where being able to say what you think, like on the spot and like have the confidence that you're right. You know what I mean? Like what you're thinking, you just spit it out and you know you're dead on. That comes so naturally to me. <laughs> it comes so naturally to me. Um, and there's even times where I'm like, I should have just said it. I should have just said it because I was right. And now, and now I could have saved people the, the trouble of the, 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 the. <sighs> but, um, I'm on the red carpet talking to celebrities, a talk show called The Real. So thankfully, leaning into the impulsivity instead of like shying away from it and being ashamed of it has helped me to find a career where I thrive. Another trait is- Yeah, like, and if you find that you, your impulsivity is getting you in trouble more than it's helping, you have to learn how to, it took me a while. I had to like, learn and understand how people perceive me and like the, and the vibe of the people, because like, if I'm in a room full of hoity toity academics and they don't know me very well, and maybe they have heard something bad about me, me being impulsive doesn't work. I mean, every, like it might get one or two of them, and then I'll connect with them and maybe they'll help me. But the person that is well poised and put together is going to win. But if I'm a room, if I'm in a room full of creatives and like we're vibing and I be my impulsive self, that wins. <laughs> So you have to learn how to understand how you're perceived. And also you have to weigh like how much you give a damn. Are these people that you, if it comes out wrong, you care? Some, if it's yes, then okay. You might just keep your mouth. Sometimes I just keep my mouth shut. I just keep it shut. And then sometimes it's like, I don't care. So my mouth is open. <laughs> so that is a juggling act. It's a balancing act that you have to learn in yourself. Is managing emotions. People with ADHD often manifest anger if that's an emotion that you grew up with. So whatever emotion that you grew up with, that is the emotion you're gonna go to when things feel frustrating. Other people, typical people may process the situation and then have a range of emotions to pick from to go to. Anger is my go-to button immediately. So if I'm reading something and it doesn't make sense, if somebody does something that I feel wasn't the best way to do things, or let's just be honest, didn't do what I told them to do, I will get angry. And at this moment today, I have shared a few times on the show that I'm in therapy to work on my anger because it's not right around other people. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so curious how she was raised, how she grew up. If it's anything like how I grew up. But I guess my go-to feeling is sad, sadness, disappointment. Um, I'm not good enough, that kind of thing. That's my go-to. And um, the thing with ADHD is um, we have this rejection sensitivity where certain things hurt us more than what it's supposed to. And um, I real I have that's been a struggle of mine that like I really have to like talk myself down. There's certain things like I just feel things too deeply. Like for example, so like that girl that I impulsively asked her something and it didn't go well. And then when I found out how she felt and even after I apologized and even after, you know, she said we're all good, I still felt so bad. Like I still wanted to cry. I just wanted to cry. And I was telling my friend that and she was like, why? <laughs> She's like, it's over. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. 
I feel so bad that I ever made her feel that way. And I, I can just tell, I could just tell in her voice that, like, she's still thinking about it. Like, she's, like, I can tell that it triggered something in her that she's been dealing with. And I, I just feel like, my friend's like, oh my God, get yourself together. Y'all apologize to me. <laughs> so I'm like, I know, I know, but I don't know. So definitely, yeah, definitely my go-to is sad. That's definitely my go-to. I just felt so sad. I just felt so bad. And the feeling feels so strong. Oh my God. But yeah, but we have, um, what's called rejection sensitivity and it, it's different for every different person. Like you might be saying, you might have ADHD and you might be saying, I don't care if I'm rejected. It depends what type of rejection, it depends what it is. It's different for every person. And I think it does have a lot to do with how you grew up. People, my brother Dennis is really close to me and he sees it. He looks at me and he's like, Jeannie, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. Why are you yelling? I've been so embarrassed because I know he's right, but I don't want to also admit it. And it takes like a day for it to subside before I can tell him I'm sorry, which is also something that is shared in this book. The difference between you and people that don't have ADHD, whatever this frontal lobe is here versus this back lobe. This frontal lobe is where you process tasks and you think about things that you have to do. And your back lobe area is where you process emotion. This book describes it as the butler and the angry neighbor. For me, I'm gonna describe it as your really good friend and mama my. When your really good friend- She definitely, her mom definitely had to have raised her very similar to how my mom raised me because she even is identifying the angry part of her mind as her mom. No, we definitely like, okay, like, she has a relationship with her mom and she's very famous. So she cannot be very honest about how she grew up with her mom. She cannot spill all the tea. She can't. She just can't. It would be an embarrassment to her mother and her family. But I just, girl, I just know. I just know. I just know. Like, I just know. Because my mom was very mean to me growing up. I just know. Friend sees that you're not on task or you may be out of focus, you're not paying attention, they'll nudge you and they'll be like, hey, you good? Are you okay? Mama Mai back here is like, why are you stupid? Why you read that wrong? Why you cook this wrong? I told you to do this and now you late? Now what happened? And it's like anxiety, right? This is for me, Mama Mai with me. People with ADHD, your frontal area, your good friend, isn't always there. Maybe checked out for lunch, maybe only works Mondays <laughs> and Fridays. Everybody with ADHD, the spectrum is different. So your good friend is different there. But you do have your back load. So when you do not function the way typical people do you'll go straight to that emotion in the back and whatever that person is in the back giving it to you it will affect you lash out or get with it really withdrawn and depressed and and feel let down about yourself and the other thing with adhd mm. that i think we all face and it is the a in adhd is attention you cannot focus you are all over the place or you clock out or you get tired for me i start yawning it's, it's a whole thing the great news is these can be superpowers if you treat them right. I built this show because I want you to own you before they do. If you own- the Paying attention is very difficult. Um, so let me say what I do now, how, how, I, how I made it happen. Well, how I made it, let me say how I made it happen in school. I actually gave a shit about school again because I literally thought School was my only saving grace in this life. If I don't make it in school, I will have a miserable life. That was my motivation for paying attention in school. And also I was just very intellectual. I am intellectual. I, I loved learning. I did. But paying attention, like work meetings, stuff like that, girl, I don't have advice. Like, I never ended up doing EMT or working in, um, like crisis centers or anything like that. Um, but what I do now is, um, again, I, like I say, the solution for ADHD is more money. So I basically just chose a job that I could make more money and a job where I like the money kind of is unlimited. Like right now I just have this one job, but I could 
do freelance work on the side. Like I could make even more, right? I'm still learning though. So I chose the money and I also chose something that is low stress and I get to work remote so I can have, so I can do this. So like I'm working, I'm dealing with a problem at work. Like, like I can't figure out this code. I do this video. Let me tell you the last video I uploaded, I was, it was in the middle of work because work was just driving me crazy. I was frustrated. And then literally when I uploaded and finished, I turned back to do my work. The solutions just magically came into my brain. Like, whoa, being able to follow my impulses is so important to me as someone with ADHD, right? Regular people, they time block, right? Okay. From this time to this time, I work on work from this time to this time. I do this from this time to this time. I do this, but with ADHD in the moment, you might feel like something else. And what I'm finding is I am way more effective when I am able to go to where my attention is drawn to. I'm so much happier and more effective. It, even in the boring stuff I have to do, I'm more effective. So that's how I chose my career. Not my dream career. I would love to do what Jeannie does. That literally being on a talk show or interviewing celebs, stuff like that. That's like my dream. Um, It was my dream. I mean, I still think it would be really cool. But it's not something that I'm like gonna actively work towards anymore at all. Especially when I can just have a YouTube and just like at a certain point, I can just like try to grow my YouTube channel or something. I don't know. Anyway, but that what that if there, when people ask, what's your dream job? That would be my dream job. Um, where am I going with this? I don't remember. Oh, but, um, even if you're not working your dream job, you can still try to figure out, this is why it's so important to understand yourself, your ADHD self, figure out what aspects are most important to you. This idea of following your passion, when you have ADHD, it's not enough. Unless you are very privileged, you have rich parents, you're well-connected, follow your passion out the wazoo. If you're a regular person with ADHD, your passion is not enough. You need to dig deeper. You need to figure out what key elements are important to you. We might have to do a completely different video to go more in depth about that. That you have ADHD, great, it's in the open. Now, what are those qualities that you work differently with? How do you need to focus differently? How do you need to manage emotions differently? How do you need to have a conversation differently? How do you need to work at a job differently? And build your own situation so that you can thrive in those places of your life. The crazy thing people don't know is I didn't graduate high school. So when you look at class of 1997, Amalpitas High, that beautiful photo with everybody there, I wasn't there because I was told that there's no way you can't graduate. Damn. Today, I don't know if I have a diploma. Is that what you get at the end of high school? Yeah, I don't know if I have that. Adriano, you said that you found it encouraging to see someone thrive. I wanna say, that in this incredible, gorgeous world with so many talented people and gorgeous women and all the stuff, as a television personality, as a YouTuber, as a stylist, I am the best wife my husband can have. I'm the best mom that Monica can have. I'm the best host for yes, Hello Honey. Right. I'm the best at being Jeannie Mai Jenkins. Yes, I hope are. that everything I taught you today helps you with your ADHD. Drop it in the comments below. Know that this is a safe community and I hear you and I see you. I love you. Thank you so much Listerine and Neutrogena for sponsoring this episode. Great job, Jeannie Mai. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for sharing that because, you know, I said earlier that a lot of people in her position, they never get honest. They never get real. And it is very, this is why people love Cardi B. Okay. It's very refreshing to see somebody be real. And I feel like she could have gotten even more real, but you know, this is like, this is more than what most most celebrities, most people with a platform who have ADHD, this video is even more than what they 
would would do wow you can see my search history how did they choose to search history because i have not searched trisha paytas in how many years what the heck okay um let's do cardi b somebody needs to make a compilation of cardi b's advice uh, oh my god I'm clicking with my left hand and it just doesn't click. Y'all, so every... All right, first of all, how y'all liking hot shit? That's one. How y'all liking it? Y'all fucking with it? Y'all fucking with it? Me, all of that. Second of all, I right, so you know, every single day, I be with my security, I be with my friends, and we just be talking and discussing um, topics that are hot on the internet, right? So let's talk about topics that are hot on the internet. And one of them, I literally have no idea what she's going to say. I'm just saying that um, the way she talks and the things that she talks about on her social media is why she's so beloved. People feel like, wow, this is somebody who's a celebrity, super duper rich. And I feel like she's being real. People, that is why they like her. They don't feel like it's a facade. They feel like it's real. It's the complete opposite of, let's say, a Kylie Jenner or a Kim Kardashian. It's so refreshing. People crave that. I know I definitely did. When I was younger, I, I wanted nothing more than that. I loved Cardi B. This was back when Cardi B was not a rapper. She was just a... um. Like, she was a, uh, a dancer. She was a dancer, but, um, club dancer, but she also was making a lot of coin from Instagram. She was an Instagram influencer because she's this real. So it's always, it's always appreciated. Um, and that's why I made my channel too. So there's just like another real person, though I'm not a celebrity or anything like that. So anyway, I liked it. Hello, Hanai. I enjoyed it. And I hope you make more. Let me go back. In that time yeah, of... I hope you make more, Ginny. Because there's so much to talk about. There's so much. And maybe she has talked about a lot. I just don't... Am I subscribed to her? I'm subscribed, but I, I definitely do not watch her videos on any kind of regular basis. But... Um, yeah, I think this is interesting. I think, um, she's going to realize more and more the longer that she has ADHD and works with her therapist, she's going to understand more and more. And what I really would love to hear from her is how she feels her ADHD affected her childhood being raised by her mom. Cause I know that messed her up. That had, that messed me up big time and I know I messed her up and she has anger issues from that because of that so and now that's a very vulnerable space to get into it's very touchy but if she ever does talk about it that will be a very very brave thing to discuss and it would help bring a lot of hope to a lot of young followers but anyway good job um Jimai on hello honey and um i'm out of here thanks for watching with me until next time i hope you liked the video if you liked it i hope you subscribed if you vibe and i'll talk to you later bye